Giving me money. He's like, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I am from Clare, Nova Scotia. It's really, really a remote place. Um, it's so remote that when we moved there, uh, my dad and I in 2000, the black population increased by 200%. <laughs> and I know some of you are like, ooh, 200%. That is a very high number. And you are right. I exaggerated it. It increased by 150 because I'm only half black. And I don't like saying black, because black is like an actual color black. I, as you can, I am dark, but I'm actually like... Right now, I'm probably like at a... I'm a big cypress, but in the summer, oh, watch out ladies, because I graduate to an apple brown Betty. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And growing up in Claire, black was weird because I was literally the only black kid in my school from grade two to grade 12. So everything I did was black history. <laughs> so like, first black kid to make the soccer team. First black kid to make the soccer team again. When I got freed from detention, <laughs> you should have seen the crowd of no one that was there. And then in grade, 12, grade 11, something magical happened. Another black kid showed up at the school. Wow, diversity. And no joke, this is actually not a joke. His name was Musa as well. <laughs> so now you have these people who the only black person they know is Musa, they meet another black person, his name is Musa, so now they assume that every black person's name is Musa. In fact, Musa is also another way to say the N-word down in Claire now, so you got these people sometimes like, ooh, can I swear? All right, you got these people that's like, ooh, these goddamn Musas <laughs> taking our spot on the soccer team. But even though we shared the same name, we could not have been way more different. Like, he smoked weed um, and had sex with the stoner chicks. I logged in and out of MSN trying to catch my crush's attention. <laughs> he, he drove a beat up Nissan Altima like he was in NASCAR. I took the school bus. He listened to Rick Ross. Well, actually, we were not so different. I also listened to Rick Ross. Rick Ross was great in 2006. And um, so, yeah. Anyways, and uh, like I said at the start of the thing, I'm still single. Not for lack of trying, though. Um, I almost tried with guys, too, but uh, truth, I downloaded Grindr because at the time, I thought it was an app for people who wanted weed because my room was like, like, you know, like, weed grinder. Grindr was like, yeah, sure. So I downloaded Grindr and made a profile whatnot, the first thing I realized was, A, women don't smoke a, smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> and then B, there are a lot of drug dealers within a 10 mile radius of where I was. <laughs> so then I kept scrolling. None of these people look like uh, weed sellers to me, but that, that was before it was legal, you know, the dark ages. So I downloaded, as so I find this guy, I forgot his name, we're gonna name him Kent. It was Kent the first name it is now. Clicked on his profile, big picture came up. I was like, oh, that is a funny looking blunt. <laughs> and I was like, that is not a blunt. And I X'd it out and I felt violated. Don't know what happened, I didn't tell anyone. Then I finally told my roommates two weeks later, and he said, oh yeah, you did, I was wondering why I saw you on there, and that's how I found out my roommate was gay. <laughs> and anyways, so I went on a lot of uh, really bad dates. Um, one girl tried to bite me, I can tell you all about that, another, I know, she didn't try, she actually bit me. Um, like Rottweiler bit me, get off my property bite, but out of happiness, it's weird, I'll tell you about it anyways. So one day I was, I was at this party talking to this girl and uh, a song came on and as they do in hip hop songs, the N-word was said, ooh. 
and she 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 like yelled it while while the song was playing. I was like, you you can't say that. And I was like, she was like, why? I said, like, because it's offensive. And every black person in this room probably has gone through that at least once in their life. You know, it's like offensive to who? Uh, offensive to me. And I was like, well, why? Is it like, because I'm I'm black? And she's like, well, you're not. You're you're black, but you're not like. Black, black. As if saying black twice made it more black. So I started thinking about it. And I was like, I started thinking about her reasoning, right? So black, black is darker than, I'm just black. So NBA superstar Stephen Curry, he's just blah. We don't even give him the CK because that's how light skinned he is. He's just blah. And then my dad, would be like black, 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 black. But in reality, right now my dad is a, probably a raspberry truffle, but in the summer he goes all the way up to a warm mahogany. And that's all I have for you guys think, tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I would just like to take the few remaining minutes I have to talk about an initiative I have. So I am a recording artist, booking agent, stand-up comedian, as you can see. And I also, to pay the bills, I also work for the Department of Education doing recruitment for their French bursary and work program. So if you want to learn French and travel Canada, come see me after. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about the Fresh Foot Forward initiative. Um, this is why I started coming to these events in the first place. Meech uh, Meet gave me a platform tonight to, to talk about it. I'm so grateful. Um, so what basically I'm trying to do is I'm trying to collect shoes or money to buy new shoes for organisms across the province, such as Juniper House, the Special Olympics, both the Clare team and the Halifax team, uh, Homebridge Youth, and other private parties who know people who are in desperate need of shoes. Um, the reason I'm, I'm talking about shoes is because I, I teamed up with a guy at Quentrell Provo who is the founder of Stop the Violence. And um, he when I worked with him on the Black Panther pro project that he spearheaded, I, saw, I always was involved with um, community work and all that, but I was never involved with something that I truly liked or believed in. Um, it was always my friend or doing a favor or, you know, because it looks good on the resume, because in high school everything looks good on the resume. And uh, after working with Quent Quentrell for the Black, uh, with the Black Panther Project, I saw that it's possible to do something for good and for something that you like. And I really, really, really like shoes. Meech can probably tell you, like I'm blowing off his inbox every two days, when are you getting these ones? Or, oh, do you have these? And um, so what I'm trying to do is uh, collect new or gently used shoes for uh, some of these organizations. And I can't stress gently used because a lot of the times when people donate their shoes, they can't be worn anymore. They literally can't be worn and they're say, hey, they're not good for me anymore. They will be good for uh, people with special needs or people who can't afford them. It's like, no, if they're not good enough for you, they're not good enough for them. Um, so my goal, my initial goal, I, it, it, my initial goal was to raise, to collect, raise funds or collect 200, uh, enough money or collect shoes for 200 pairs worth by last May. I failed miserably at that objective, but I did not stop trying. The initiative is still going. So next May is when the Special Olympics will be competing again. So I'm hoping by that next May, I will have collected enough shoes to give to these athletes and other organizations across the province. So if you, and one last thing I will just say is, a lot of the time, um, I will not accept shoes that um, come from Payless or Walmart because for the simple fact that these shoes break down so easily and I would not want to give a shoe to someone that I would not wear. Um, so if, if you would like to donate shoe, donate money to the campaign, I would greatly appreciate it. I have business cards, they're only one-sided because I'm still balling on the budget. Um, <laughs> and uh, I also made a personal commitment that every time I would buy a pair of shoes for myself, I would not do so unless, uh, unless I received 
a donation or uh, I would donate one um, or I would uh, make receive a make a donation from my own personal collection. That's why I haven't been in the store in the recent weeks, Meech. Um, so uh, if, you ha if you have shoes, running shoes, flats, uh, for, for women who go to work, uh, hiking boots, soccer cleats, any type of footwear that is new or gently used or you would like to make a monetary donation. It doesn't have to be a big donation. Somebody gave me a hundred bucks. Somebody gave me two dollars. I will accept anything. It all goes towards the cause. I can even provide charity for tax purposes. Uh, charity. Uh, receipts for tax purposes. So if you have the time. And I know all of you, I know all of you, um, have worn shoes that you probably like, oh, I, I'm going to need these shoes for whenever I wear an orange t-shirt out on November 22nd. If you have those type of shoes, it means that you no longer need them. And if they're new or gently used, please come to me. I will make sure that they are given to uh, the proper people. Thank you so much. And... We have another round of applause.